Yo, today I'm gonna to be showing you guys how to do this crazy pixel sorter bass track fire effect in After Effects. I first saw this effect done by Pavel. He wore on a bunch of the Brian Delamont editing contests, and I don't think I've seen anyone do this effect, so I figure I might as well do it. So I've got this clip here of Rich Amiri, and then I've got this fire asset that I got from actionvfx.com. And nothing in this video that I'm using is sponsored. This is just, you know, genuinely good assets that I'm using. And as you can see with this fire asset, it's not a very normal asset i kind of stretched it and made it a little bit warped so that i could kind of fit it to rich and mary's face here because the original fire asset was kind of just too big so so first step we got to do is we got to track this fire to his face so you'd think that you'd want to do this through 3d tracking through the regular normal tracker but i'm actually going to track his actual face using a different facial motion tracking feature in after effects so to do that i'm going to come up here to my pen tool and just do a rough mask of his face this is seriously one of the best assets that I use because you know when you track objects you're usually not going to track them to someone's face you're going to be tracking it to this structure that's in the background or something so it's a lot harder to track a face if you're not using this method and there we go so now what we're going to do is open up the mask tab by tapping m on our keyboard right click on mask and just click track mask and that's going to open up this little thing right here on the tracker tab and for method you're going to make sure it's on face tracking detailed features and so there we go we have this face track data right here and it actually looks pretty good it definitely doesn't look perfect but this is a really great solution especially if you want to track any faces this is something that i used for this little like iron man project that i did just for fun so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to create some tracking data so i'm just going to click on that face layer and click track camera Camera. Now on my computer, it's going to take me about 30 seconds because my computer is pretty decent, but you guys, it might take a little bit longer if you don't have a great computer. So now it's going to bring up all these points on here. Now I'm going to pick a point that is kind of staying on the subject throughout. So right here, I'm looking at this point on his forehead, this blue point right here. As you can see, it's actually tracking pretty decently throughout the whole thing. So I'll track the fire to that. So I'll just click on that little blue point right click and i'll create a null and camera and i'll just set the null and camera to match the length of my comp and then on the fire layer i'll just make that visible i'll make that 3d and now as you see it's tracked to that point pretty accurately now i just have to move it to the right spot so as you can see here it kind of drifts off at the end here though for the most part it's not bad we're just gonna have to fix the 3d track another thing you could do this is a pretty short clip you can just you know set some keyframes fix it yourself just by eye and when you're doing this effect i probably recommend having the subject you know be in one spot not moving around too much in this case it's a little bit more tricky but you know that's what we're here for i also want to you know make it a little bit skinnier kind of match the face make it longer in certain points make it shorter in other certain points so now we have something that looks like this and this isn't perfect but this is pretty much what we want to start out before we start adding some effects here so now these two layers the fire and the face tracking layer we're going to pre-compose them together with Control shift c and make sure to move all attributes into the new composition and another way you can do that is once you have them highlighted you can right click go to pre-compose and click ok now it's all about kind of matching the fire to look realistic in this atmosphere you can do this in a realistic way or you can do this kind of in a stylistic way now you can see in this example here up on the screen this is more stylistic not realistic it's you know pink grainy taking more of an artistic stab at it so if i were going to make this look like realistic fire what i would do is add on some lumetri color and typically blast up the temperature to make it look like actual fire and depending on your environment you know thinking of how light is going to affect of course you want to add on deep glow now deep glow is probably the best way to make the glow of fire look realistic there's also another one that's really good it's called perfect glow i believe that's done by ignace alea and again none of this is sponsored i think this is just you know good assets for you guys to use so i'll just play with the exposure on the deep glow to make fire look more realistic usually i want to add some fire embers as well but for the sake of this tutorial i'm not going to do that and then i'm also going to add on heat wave so this is a red giant universe plugin it adds some natural blur that makes the fire look more realistic and then some flow. So if you turn the heat intensity all the way up to 100, and definitely the higher that you turn up the heat intensity, the hotter the fire looks. So that is a really good start to this effect right here. I'm just gonna make that invisible for now and add on pixel sorter. So this is kind of what Pavel uses in those videos to make it look, you know, kind of trippy and warped, like the fire is kind of warped to his face. And typically on effect, 
right here, you wanna set this to outside thresholds and then mess with the two threshold values here until you get something that makes sense. Uh, that looks pretty cool right there. And then of course, my favorite part is messing with the angle. So I'm just gonna show you guys what this is made of. I'll add on pixel sorter to this random picture right here. So many different ways that you can affect this and make this look crazy. So obviously, you know, your threshold, that's gonna start giving you the warp. But when you come down here to stretch, you can get some really interesting looks if you enable that. And then also if you go to strips down here, you can mess with the offset, the seed amount. I mean, yeah, there's literally so much you can do with this. I don't wanna go over everything. I don't want this video to be super long, but um, just mess with it yourself. So if you guys like this, I'll have this all linked in the description. Um, typically when you mess with the angle, you want this to be kind of pointing upwards. And then also to help you out when you're using this effect with other assets, what I'm gonna do is, is instead of rendering this out on full, I'm gonna have this rendered out on half quality, just so we can save time when we're editing, because that's the most important part when you're working with clients. But now I'm gonna go for my stylized look. So I'll just go in here and change the fire to something like pink. I think pink looks cool for fire. I don't know why, or maybe like a green. I'll do a green. And then I'll copy that same tritone to his face, and then I'll adjust the blend with original. So just kind of give an in-between point between what the original clip looks like and what this green looks like. So, you know, in-between gives kind of like a realistic blend, if that makes sense. And then of course you can add on some turbulent displace and then bring the amount and size down a whole bunch. Um, but I noticed that that definitely gives an interesting look and kind of helps everything blend together again a little bit more. And now on the original bottom layer, apart from the effect that we're going to do, I'm going to copy and paste the same tritone effect and then do the same thing again. Just kind of ring that green up just a little bit so it's a slight green tint and that's going to really help us with color correction here and then you want to do some color correction on the fire on the face on the face tracking points then on the background and then all of that kind of together and then you can add on like a stylized color grade so i'm going to pre-compose all of these layers together and then add on a lumetric color just do some standard things that i usually do for color correction and color grading like increasing contrast decreasing shadows increasing whites decreasing highlights on top of everything. I'm gonna add on some grain. Typically, I like to add on grain to all of my clips. I'll increase the amplitude to something like 0.1 and then color frequency, just blast that up to oblivion and kind of just see what this looks like rendered out in full. And then I'll add on, of course, RSMB, which is realistic motion blur. And that's really gonna help the fire truly blend with everything to make it look much more realistic and there's so many other assets that you can add on to make this look better. I'm kind of just barely scratching the surface here. You know, this is something that I can do in five to 10 minutes. Uh, but on a professional level, I always recommend, you know, going crazy with it as much as you can while saving the most amount of time that you can. And speaking of which, if you guys do want to save time editing, make sure to check out my website. I've got a ton of great editing assets for you guys. And I release how I do a lot of that stuff on the channel here for free. And I spent a lot of time on these tutorials, so I'd appreciate it if you guys liked and subscribed. It really helps out the algorithm and helps me grow my channel. And I really appreciate you guys. Peace.